Now, um, you also demoed a, uh, the community portal. Could you tell us a little bit about that, how that works? The community portal, um, what we're trying to do with the community portal is that uh, the same idea again is that we're trying to um, you know, dive right in deep into the Web 2.0 era where you know, that's just one person is going to be developing everything. You know, Cisco can't develop all the features that everybody wants. However, um, we know that a lot of networking instructors and other people, they know a lot about networking. Um, they have these great ideas because they, they live it and teach it all the time. Um, but they don't really have, um, you know, the, uh, I guess the knowledge, some of them, to implement it. So, but they know, you know, computer science students too. So the idea is to kind of merge all these together and have them build uh, little applications um, um, off of these. But the, the other thing is this community is um, kind of a set that's really open in that um, everything in there is kind of shared among everybody. So if, um, for example, I see an application that, I, that is really cool, but it doesn't really fit my needs, um, I have the ability to talk to the person who did it, or maybe just hire some other people to kind of help me um, change it to the way I want. Right. Yeah. That's, that's, really, that's really neat. Now you're looking for uh, development partners, and, and uh, I'll ask you about that, and then I'll ask Isak about that too. But, but you, you had some, a little bit of discussion about development partners. I think, how does, how does somebody get into the community portal? How would somebody access it? Do they need to contact you and, and, and get access to it? Um, they can contact me or they can contact Dennis or Isaac, anybody that's in the, um, or Brad Anderson, who's our project manager. Okay. Um, and we, we basically create an account, um, but uh, that, that's really much, that's all there is to it. Great. Yeah. Now, Isaac, I wanted to ask you uh, a couple, a few questions here. Sure. Who can get involved in this? Uh, let, let's say uh, somebody's well, watching this, they want to get involved. Yeah, well, pr primarily, uh, we are interested in our Cisco Networking Academy community because we created, initially we created Packet Tracer, we created the curriculum for them. And uh, we feel that uh, um, our community is the closest uh, people that understand the Packet Tracer and the networking education world uh, probably better than anybody else. So we would like to engage our uh, Cisco networking community first. Uh, we understand that uh, to do code development, probably the profile that is required for a person to call develop application may not be in many of our instructors. So at some point, institutions that may be interested may, be, may need to uh, talk to some other uh, groups in their own institution that may have the skill set that you need to call develop. I'm thinking about computer science departments or programming uh, groups that eventually could cooperate with them. So uh, the person that's closest to packet tracer and to networking may generate an idea and eventually may need to partner with somebody else to implement that idea, to program that idea. So creating a little bit of this uh, multifunctional uh, groups and cross-functional groups. It's, it's great, almost a little uh, business environment where you've got somebody that knows networking, working with somebody that knows programming, and they collaborate to put together put together something together. That's a great idea. Correct. Like uh, that. Uh, the other thing that we uh, that we also like to do is we uh, there are many institutions, uh, education institutions uh, in the world that uh, probably not, do not have a particular interest in the Cisco Networking Academy. Uh, they may be four or five year universities that are more in the academic theoretical part of, of the world. They are not interested in teaching our courses, uh, but they teach their own networking classes. And one of the things that we feel is uh, uh, Cisco may be able to provide some value even to those uh, classes that are not necessarily our curriculum, but maybe something like Packet Tracer that uh, makes uh, teaching networking a more effective process. So the success that we've had with the Academy is something that we think could be eventually um, uh, used by other institutions, you know, universities, uh -huh. that may be interested in parts of the things that we do, and particularly in Packet Tracer. We would like to encourage them, first of all, to explore the use of Packet Tracer, and eventually when they do, if they have the capacity to produce external applications or their own activities, uh, their own content, you know, that can be more appropriate what, uh, to what they need uh, to do so as well. That, that's great. Now, I wanted to ask you a little bit about I, on one of your slides, I think you had contests. What, you got some thoughts on uh, what kind of contests you have? <laughs> well, um, there's always uh, that element of motivation uh, where you have uh, people competing uh, for something. Um, we uh, very recently started developing something I would call uh, uh, NetSpace, which is the equivalent of the, web, uh, the website for our students. And uh, one of the things that uh, 
in which we uh, engage our students very, very often is in contests, uh, competitions, uh, about anything, uh, right? Uh, our students are natural competitors. Um, we feel that eventually we could do the same with uh, developing external applications. You could have uh, developed contests uh, to have uh, instructors or developers compete you know, for the best external application of that. Sort. So these are motivational elements that people like, uh, people like to participate in something if there's a competition involved, right? You are always yeah, yeah. Uh, in that. that, that. Uh, it's exciting. Right. Now, um, how can people join you guys? If somebody's, if somebody's watching this, what should they do? I know I asked this a little earlier, but maybe you could give us a little more uh, info. Um, yeah, I think um, given the, the, the way we have structured our academies, uh, if they're close to an academy, the best way is to contact their own academy. If, if, if you know an instructor of an academy or you know somebody, an administrator of an academy, if, if uh, you contact them, uh, they may be the best way to get to us. Uh, but if you don't, uh, the best way probably would be to email uh, to some of us. I mean, it could be uh, Dennis, Mark, or myself, um, because we will be uh, glad to, to uh, answer them. We probably don't. Just to add one, one reason that we really want to route people, even if you're not in the academy now, to an academy is just basic support. You know, we have this very evolved support model yep. and communication model. So we don't want to create expectations or start relationships that we can't support and nurture. And so if we do that without trying to bootstrap off the existing academy structure, it gets more difficult. So that, that's part of it. That's, that's, that's a great thing. That's great. Now, is there, a, is there a website people can look at if they're interested? Sure. Uh, for in general, the program, uh, the academy, you, if you go to cisco.netacad.net, which is our uh, website, uh, you will find basic information about how to become an academy or how to contact us or how to locate an academy, which is what we would like to promote uh, uh, because what, of what Dennis said. Uh, ideally, uh, some of the pilots that we're exploring have an academy uh, coordinating this effort on our behalf because we, um, we have the support mechanisms in place, they know how to contact us, and, uh, and that would be probably the easiest way. One of the things that worry us about extending the use of Packet Tracer as extending the use of the program is the business model and the support model. We, are, uh, we have a strong business and support model for our academies. We don't have something for the outside and we don't want to start creating that. Sure, sure. Okay, uh, we certainly had incredible impact. I, I'm, I'm amazed, you know, a million people using this is just an amazing number. Uh, it's fantastic. I just want to stay for the record. I don't. We don't have that verified. That's well, a, that's an estimate. Well, you got hundreds of thousands of people. Yeah, I think you can safely say that, right? Yes. Probably what we could say is uh, we've had about two, more than two million people that have already gone through, graduated from our program. We have an average of uh, seven hundred thousand students per year now coming through our program, and about five hundred thousand are CCNA students. So. Uh, we can safely say that at least 500,000 students per year are using Packet Tracer, uh, given the way that we have uh, made it part, integral part of our curriculum today. That's great. Well, well, th thank you. It's a, it's a great product, and we really uh, appreciate you coming out here for this conference. Thank you. Our pleasure, and we appreciate the partnership. Uh, we just want to commend uh, NSF and MPIC for uh, we don't get a chance to interact with this mix of people easily. So by bringing all these people together in two days, conferences periodically, it's invaluable for us professionally as well. So thank you. Good. We'll have to give you more of those opportunities. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks a lot, you guys. Thank you very much. Thank you.